Uh, like many other elders, I'm uh, here for the first time in my life in Chicago, UBF. <laughs> I've been here since 1982, so how many years is that? Um, <clears throat> I did not expect any um, special song today because I did not have any special campus. But I was so surprised to see uh, great young men and women uh, came out today to pray for my message. I really thank all of you today for doing that. And they're actually very talented, and I was so surprised how harmonious their music was. Do, do you agree with me? Yes. Okay. Okay. okay um, the title of my message today is Love and Respect, the Foundation of a Happy Marriage, Happy Family. Uh, the passage is Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 through 33. Key verse is verse 33. Okay, let's read this verse all together. Okay, let's go. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself. And the wife must respect her husband. There is an increasing pessimism about marriage in our culture these days. And this is especially true to young adults. They believe their chances of having a good marriage are not great. And even if married, many of them may not be miserable, or may be miserable. However, statistics show that if you are a reasonably well-educated person with a stable income, come from an intact family and are religious, and marry after 25 without first having a baby, your chances of having a happy marriage is high. <laughs> there are surprisingly many good points for marriage, such as financial stability, better physical and mental health, and mutual support in all occasions. Not to mention sharing a wonderful life of faith in Christ together. Today's passage gives us a practical wisdom in building up a happy and blessed marriage and establishing a wonderful families in God. The main point of today's passage is for husbands to love their wives as the head of the wife and for wives to respect and submit to their husbands. So let's think about first how to be a respectful wife according to the, uh, today's passage. Um, let's look at verses 22 through 24. Please find verses 22 through 24 in your Bible. Okay, let's read it together. Okay, let's go. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husband as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as the Christ is the head of the church his body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also as wives must meet to the husbands and everything. The role of a wife is incredibly powerful in the life of her husband. Is that true or false? Okay, thank you. Then I have a question for all wives here, or wife candidates. Do you want to help your husband and respect him or pray for him? Do you? Yes. Good, thank you. I assume all of you say yes. So let's think about how to respect your husbands today. So the word submit does not mean just being a silent without question or absolutely passive, letting your husband make all the decisions. Rather, think of the word submit as help. In other words, submit to your husband means help your husband. There is a good example of a wife's submission to her husband in Timothy Keller's case. In the late 1980s, his family was situated in a nice suburb of Philadelphia where Tim had a full-time position as a professor. Then he got an offer to move to New York City to plant a new church. 
he was excited as well as afraid because he did not know much about Manhattan or uh, and whether or not planting a church there would be successful. Also, it would consume a lot of more of their time and energy. And they are also concerned about their children's education. His wife, Kathy, had serious doubts that it was the right choice. Knowing that, Tim said, well, if you do not want to go, then we will not go. Then Kathy replied, if you think this is the right thing to do, then exercise your leadership. Make the choice. <laughs> it is your job to make the decision, and it is my job to wrestle with God until I can joyfully support your call. Tim made the decision to move to New York City and plant the Redeemer Presbyterian Church. The whole family, including their children, considers it one of the most truly many things he ever did. Although he was quite scared, he felt a call from God. And it was clear to them that God worked in and through them when they accepted their gender roles as a gift from God. Now, why should wives submit at times like this? Let's think about this. I think it is not because wives are not decisive enough. The fact is that many wives can be more decisive than their husbands. So I have a good example. An article in USA Today says that women are mostly better investors than men. When it comes to making investment decisions, women tend to keep the bigger picture in mind and are not rushed into investments before conducting research or seeking professional advice. In contrast, the majority of men prefer to make financial decisions entirely on their own, which, makes, which means that they have a better chance to make stupid decisions on investments. <laughs> So why are wives called to this position of submission? The answer can be found in the life of Jesus. Jesus obeyed God and fully submitted himself to the will of God to die on the cross for the sin of the world. Even though he did not want to, but he obeyed. It is the mark of his greatness. Likewise, wives are called to follow Jesus in submitting to their husbands. Submitting to their husbands as Jesus submitted himself to God's will does not mean that wives are inferior. Rather, it makes them more respectful and godly wives, worth far more than rubies. Now I want to talk about what it means to submit to husbands and be, be a respectful wife in more practical ways. First, encourage your husband. Remember that how you think of your husband shapes your behavior for your husband. Do you think your husband as hopeful or hopeless? A most effective way that a wife can show respect to her husband is to encourage him. Believe it or not, every man wants to be encouraged, especially by his wife. If everyone else says your husband is not handsome, but you, <laughs> but you say your husband is handsome, he feels he is really handsome. On the other hand, if everyone else says your husband is handsome, but if you say your husband is not handsome, he feels he is really ugly. 
Actually, this is true to wives as well, the other way around. So many are dying, many husbands are dying for wife's, wife's encouragement. He needs you to encourage him so that he can find enough strength to lead your family like Jesus. Okay, I read it again. He needs you to encourage him so that he can find enough strength to lead your family like Jesus. Okay, let's say this together. Or oh, women, okay? Let's go. He needs you to encourage him so that he can find enough strength to lead your family like Jesus. Thank you. Secondly, your husband needs your help. Man needs a helper. Not just a helper, but a suitable helper according to Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. It is not because men are helpless species, but God made man in that way. Wives, your husband needs your help. If you do not know how to respect your husband or help him, ask him. He will give you some hints. <laughs> Next, do not say negative comments about your husband in front of others and children. If you say in front of your children, your dad screwed up again. <laughs> he always screws up. I don't know why I married him. If you disrespect your husband in front of others, nobody will respect your husband. This is a lose-lose situation. Because if your husband tries to argue with your negative comments, he's mean to you. If he does not say anything, he's accepting that he is weak and does not deserve respect from anyone. Okay, next, be sweet instead of nagging. <laughs> Some wives try to fix up their husbands in a short period of time <laughs> by pushing, demanding, nagging, and sometimes crying. <laughs> when wives cry, husbands don't know what to do. <laughs> they just look at ceiling helplessly. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 25, verse 24 says, Better to live on a corner of the roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife. <laughs> so I do not want to go any further about a quarrelsome wife here. <laughs> Wives, when you feel nagging, choose sweeter words instead. Your husband knows what you are trying to say. Your one sweet word takes away all the stress of the day from your husband. Now let's think about second, what it means to be the head of the wife and love like Jesus for men. This is for men. Look at verse 23. Okay, let's read verse 23 all together. Okay, let's go. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Bible clearly says that Christ is the head of the church. Likewise, verse 23 says that the husband is the head of the wife. We are not going to argue with that, because the Bible says clearly that the husband is the head of the wife. But the question for all of you here, men, are you a good head of your wife? <laughs> In other words, are you a bad one? Being the head of the wife is actually a great 
and biblical responsibility for men. Some of you may want to say, no, I don't want to be the head of my family. Even if you do not want to be the head of your wife, you are already designated by God to be the head. Some single men say, I can't wait until I get married, thinking only about the romantic aspect of the marriage. But loving your wife as Christ loved the church for 50 years or more is not a small job. It is a huge responsibility. The role of headship is the most misunderstood area. Some men might think that being a husband brings entitlement of doing whatever pleases him. But being the head of the wife does not mean that the husband should exercise authority to demand unconditional obedience from his wife. Actually, we live in a day that many young men look inferior compared to women. Currently, more young women are attending colleges, taking leadership roles in schools, attending church, and even obtaining driver's license compared to young, young men. However, when a stalemate has to, be broken, has to be broken, the wife should try to respect the husband's leadership. When both parties cannot agree, what should be done? This should be the place where the Bible calls head kicks in. The fact that the husband is the head of the wife does not mean that he is the highest authority. There are church authorities, government authorities, and above all, there is God's authority. If Shepherd Rich Ruzuski, a police officer at Northwestern, gives you a ticket because you did not stop at the stop sign, you have to receive the ticket and pay the fine. You cannot say, if you give me a ticket, I will give you a ticket because I have the same authority as you do. If you say that, he will give you two tickets. <laughs> we have to submit to the higher authority, especially when it comes from God. Let's look at verse 25. Okay, let's read it together, verse 25. Let's go. Husbands. Love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. No husband can do what Christ did for all of us. Then how can husbands love their husbands, uh, their, or love their wives as Christ did? Verses 26 and 27 say, To make her holy and cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. When we were studying uh, about this passage, one of the elders said that husbands are responsible for even their wives' wrinkles on the face. <laughs> husbands need to lead wives to be cleansed by the word of God and live a holy and blameless life until their wives' faces become radiant. Verse 28 says that he who loves his wife loves himself. Also, we can find this in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7, which says that the woman is the glory of man. In other words, the wife reflects the husband. Everyone loves himself and wants to love himself. Then he needs to love his wife. So let's think about a, practic a few practical ways to, uh, for husbands to love their wives. First, love your wife as she is. Love your wife as she is, not what you hope she would become. 
Okay, I'll say it again. Love your wife as she is, not what you hope she would become. Some might say, I would really love my wife if she cooks delicious food for me and loses some weight. <laughs> but this is not right. You must love your wife as she is, not who she can be. Jesus, Jesus did not love us because we met all the criteria of a good person to be loved. But Jesus loved us and accepted all of us just as we are. So love your wife as she is. Secondly, our most important human relationship is with our, with our, uh, with our wives. Of course, our most important relationship with, is with Christ. But our most important human relationship and friendship is with our wives. You may think, I work hard and I put food on the table, so I'm a good husband and a good friend of my wife. But your wife may not think so. Just ask her if you are a really good friend. Good friends talk about everything together. Share life together, whether good or bad. Laugh together, cry together. Enjoy happy and sorrowful moments together. As verse 21 says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Okay, let's read the verse 21 together. Verse 21, okay. Verse 21, okay, let's go. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Okay, nextly. What can keep the marriages together through rough times? We all face rough times. It is the vows we made before God at the time of our wedding. We made a promise before God that the husband would love his wife and the wife would love, would respect her husband in health and in sickness until parted by death. Sometimes couples are faced with really hard times, such as financial difficulties or serious health issues. But the vows we made keep us going. No matter what happens, we need to love each other regardless. Next, husbands, uh, husbands are responsible for the well-being of their families. Husbands need to protect their wives and children from the evil in this tough world. It is man's responsibility as the head of the family. If there is a strange sound at night at the door, don't say to your wife, oh honey, I'm so scared. <laughs> Can you go out and, and check it out for me? <laughs> no, it is your responsibility to go out and see if any thieves are out there. If your son or daughter messes up at school or with their friends, you need to be involved and help them out. It is a way to love your wife and lead like Jesus as the head of the family. Your wife is like a garden and you are the gardener. As a gardener, you have to take care of your garden We all like beautiful gardens, but we don't like gardening because it requires a lot of work. I have a garden front and back, so it's not easy to take care of the garden all year long. We cannot complain saying, man, my garden has too many weeds. Man, my garden has too many rocks, and the soil is too bad for plants to grow. But it is your garden, and you are responsible. You have to take care of them. You have to cultivate the soil for plants to grow. When you do, your garden will look beautiful and bear good fruits for you. 
We all know how powerful love languages work in our marriage. Now I'm going to talk about love language. All you probably all know about it. What it tells us is basically we must send the love in forms that the other person can receive and appreciate. For example, if a husband sends an I love you message to his wife by sending movie tickets while his wife wants to sit down and talk and chat with him. She would not feel she was loved, even if the husband did his best to express his love for her. In a marriage, so often love is being sent, but it is not received. God himself understood this love language very well, because human beings would not understand who God is unless they seek God in their practical lives. So God sent himself in a human form we could relate to. Through Jesus and his life on earth, we could grasp who God is and his amazing love language for all of us, grace and love. One of my love languages is, is to travel and eat nice meals. My wife's love language is to serve. She likes to serve many people, especially great servants of God like Dr. Lee and Mother Mary. So she spent lots of time with them, not with her, with her family. My children, when they were growing, growing, uh, growing up, longed for our first family trip but it was not realized until they became adults. Actually, my wife and I, I and I thought at the time that having a family trip was not a spiritual activity, so we did not pursue it. But when we finally realized the importance of having quality time as family, we decided to go for our first family trip about eight years ago, when my first son was 24 and my second son was 21, and my daughter was 18 at the time. Since then, we have a family trip once a year. My children say nowadays that our family is the number one family in the whole world. <laughs> During our elders group of study on this, on this passage, we talked about, discussed about, which would be harder for husbands to love wife, or for wife to submit to her husband. We all agreed that it is harder for husbands to love wives <laughs> than wives to submit their husbands. Probably we felt a heavy responsibility as the head of the family in all aspects of our lives. I'll give you one good example. When Adam and both uh, Adam and Eve both sinned against God, disobeying God's command. God said, Adam, where are you? God looked for Adam and asked this question, Adam, where are you? God knew that it is man's responsibility to take care of his family. Now, to all unmarried people here, I hope you did not, uh, I did not scare you from wanting to establish a Christian home after hearing about what it means for the husband to be the head and love like Jesus and for a wife to submit to her, her husband. Believe it or not, survey says that the number of married people who say they are very happy in their marriage is pretty high. It's about 62%, if you know the, uh, the number. Most striking news of all, two-thirds of those unhappy marriages will become, will become happy within five years if they stay married and do not get divorced. During the last two decades, research evidence shows that people who are married consistently 
show much higher degrees of satisfaction with their lives than those who are single, divorced, or living with a partner. Also, children who grow up in married two-parent families have two to three times more positive life outcomes than those who do not. I pray that many young adults here may establish godly house churches, godly Christian homes, and all married couples here may have wonderful home, loving and respecting each other, out of reverence for Christ. May God establish many godly and beautiful house churches in and among us. Amen. Amen. Let's read verse 33 all together. Verse 33. Okay, let's go. However, each one of you also must love his wife. Yes. And the wife must respect her husband. Okay, let's pray. Most precious Father in heaven, thank you so much for granting us this precious passage today. Thank you so much for teaching us about establishing, uh, establishing wonderful uh, uh, house churches. Uh, through today's passage. Please help all husbands uh, to love uh, their uh, wives. Also all wives to submit uh, to their husbands and love and respect each other. May you raise up many wonderful Christian homes and house churches in and among us. Thank you so much for this precious words of God. I pray in Jesus' name.